In the middle of Denali backcountry, it's raining. You just saw a grizzly bear floating some white water, but this is where it's at, folks. Have you ever wondered what true adventure is? Well, I'm Ben Smith from Maryland to Alaska. This past summer, my family and I went on a journey across North America and had the pleasure of exploring all the last frontier had to offer. If you want full in-depth videos from all of our trip, check out my series, The Adventure of a Lifetime. But if you want inside information about how we survived day in and day out of life on the road, all of our adventures, and inside information about how to travel to Alaska, this is the story from Inside. We're just an ordinary family with an extreme sense of adventure. Whether we travel by land, air, or sea, we will use our various methods of travel to make our way across North America to explore the last frontier. Our plan was simple. Let's start from the beginning. For the first leg of the journey, it was just my dad and I in our minivan pulling our adventure trailer with all our gear, and we would be driving out west. And we are off. Day one, we woke up, hit the road, um, pretty smooth sailing driving. It was about a 10 hour drive to Chicago. Nothing really exciting happened. We ended up staying at a relative's house that first night. And the second morning we got up and we actually went into downtown Chicago. Did some exploring. I really like Chicago as a city. Explored a little bit of downtown Chicago and swam in Lake Michigan. And then we continued to head west through Wisconsin. So it was about a six hour drive, long day of driving. Nothing really happened. We were here in Minneapolis. Then we went to Target Field and caught the Twins Guardians baseball game. It's on our lifetime goals to go to every MLB stadium. So we thought we'd break up the drive and catch a baseball game. After the game, we got back in the car and continued driving. About three or four hours later, we pulled off at a rest area and we're gonna try to get some sleep, but sleeping in a minivan is not comfortable at all. We laid there for about two hours, couldn't sleep. So we just said, why not keep driving? So we drove most of the morning, starting at about midnight, all the way through the next day. After driving all the way through North Dakota, we had finally reached something we were excited to reach. And I think we're ready to get out of the car and do some exploring. An iconic spot in Fedor Roosevelt National Park. This is a national park in the Badlands of North Dakota. It has really awesome scenery. There's bison. So we thought we'd make a quick stop. This was our first time to get out of the car and stretch our legs. We got the pack raft in the water on the Little Missouri River. It was an awesome float. The scenery there was awesome. So we floated down and then hiked back. It was a great way to see Fedor Roosevelt in one day. Before we got up. Good morning. So I just left camp. I've got my day pack. And we are headed up the mountain to watch sunrise. And I actually climbed a mountain for sunrise and got a gorgeous view over Fedor Roosevelt in the Badlands. That was one of my highlights. That was a super sick sunrise. And then we got back in the car and continued driving. That day we had about an eight hour drive through Montana. It was very plain, very boring driving, but we knew we were going to get to the mountains. And that first moment when we saw the mountains pulling into East Glacier, it was a great moment. We were struggling to find a place to camp in East Glacier, but we met a really nice lady and she let us camp in her backyard with fellow hikers. This was a unique experience as we got to talk to some of the Continental Divide Trail hikers. The next morning we got up and drove into Two Medicine area of Glacier National Park. This is a lesser known area of Glacier National Park, but it is stunning scenery. We set up camp really early at the Two Medicine campground and packed our bags for a long day hike. The plan was to do about an 18 mile loop up and over two passes, but as we were there in June, there was still a lot of snow once we got to higher elevations. The hike itself was a really nice hike, nice looking trout in Old Man Lake. Tried to go up and over Pickman's Pass, but had to turn back because the conditions weren't good. We ended up sliding down the mountain. We returned to our campground and we saw some wild goats in our campground, which is a really unique experience. 
We even took a plunge into to Medicine Lake later that afternoon. It's not that cold. This morning, we continued our time in Glacier by moving north. Um, going to Sun Road was not open when we were there, so we chose to do the Manny Glacier area. This area is absolutely stunning. The jagged peaks around there are just amazing. And we spotted a grizzly bear, like right there. And went on a hike. Um, it was about a four or five mile hike to Bullhead Lake. Um, this was a nice hike. Oh, After that, we made our way north to the Canada and US border. Unfortunately, we got there like right as the border was closing and we didn't have all the paperwork we needed because COVID-19 and stuff. So we actually didn't get into Canada that night as we were planning to. Um, and there was no reception. We had to fill out this thing online. It was kind of a mess. And then we ended up camping there and going back to the border when it opened in the morning. And then we drove up to Calgary where we picked up my mom and my brother Matthew at the airport. They were flying in to meet us as they didn't want to spend the week driving out. The week driving out with me and my dad and I, it was very nice. We really enjoyed the time, just the two of us. So we made our way into the Canadian Rockies. Our first night was in Canmore. This is a super iconic uh, Canadian Rocky mountain town. Evening, I went into the Canmore Nordic Bike Park, which is actually where the Olympics were held. It's super awesome downhill mountain biking. I had an awesome time, some of the best mountain biking ever there. And um, that night I was actually flying my drone over the um, Bow River there in Canmore. And this was um, one of the hardest parts of the trip for me because I experienced a flyaway and on my drone I actually saw it. It just took off right into the bridge over the Bow River there in Canmore and it actually fell right into the river. I saw it fall and this was a super devastating thing for me just to see it and I knew it was gone. I thought all the footage was gone, but I was able to save it later. I was able to come up with a solution. So we were able to get a replacement drone, which will be flown and shipped to Alaska, which was where we're gonna be in about a week. So more on that later, but we woke up in Canmore the next day and I kind of just had to put the whole drone thing behind me and uh, continue to enjoy being in an awesome place. We made our way into Banff National Park. This is a super awesome park in the Canadian Rockies. We went to Two Jack Lake, um, Lake Minnewanka, I did some cliff jumping there, it was awesome. Uh, then that afternoon we actually explored downtown Banff, Banff Hot Springs, super sick iconic spots in the Canadian. We dropped our bikes off, drove up to the put-in and kayaked down. This was a super fast section and it was super scenic, super awesome, about five mile float. Some of the best paddling I've ever done. It wasn't too white water or anything like that. It was moving, but not too difficult. So this lake has been absolutely amazing. We gotta head back now, but... And then we made our way, uh, continued to make our way north on the Icefields Parkway towards Lake Louise. And we stayed at the Lake Louise campground. The next day we got up early and secured our spot at the Lake Louise parking lot which fills up really quick as it is one of the top destinations in the entire world honestly we were able to see the sunrise over lake louise and it was absolutely amazing and then we went on the lake agnes tea house hike um so there's actually like a hike up to a tea house and we ordered food up there it was really crowded because it's one of the best hikes in the world we did an alternate route up to climb devil's thumb this was a super awesome hike we went on the back side of Plain of Six Glaciers. Climb Devil's Farm, which was 360 degree views of the Canadian Rockies from up there. One of the best hikes of the trip for sure. We made our way back down to Lake Louise and then back down to campground. I actually had some downtime, so I did a quick lap on the pack raft there on the Bow River. Super fast white water. And that night, actually, it was like raining off and on all day. But that night we went up to Lake Moran for a sunset and got a decent view of Lake Moran. The next morning we got up early and about 5.30 well before sunrise and went up to Lake Moran, climbed the rock pile trail and got a gorgeous view of the sunrise. Uh, that's one of the best lakes in the world, the scenery there, the blue water was just insane. We headed north on the Icefields Parkway towards Jasper. This is about a 230 kilometer drive 
through the mountains. It's considered one of the best drives in the world, and I would agree. There were so many spots to pull off and see glaciers, see wildlife. Uh, it's cold, it's windy, cold. <laughs> but it's still a fun pack raft here. Uh, the drive was just amazing. And we made it to Jasper. We stayed at the Whistler's Campground in Jasper National Park the next night. The next day was a day in Jasper, so we did Maljean Canyon and Maljean Lake. We did some kayaking on Maljean Lake, which was awesome, and hiked Maljean Canyon. And then I actually went on a bike ride that afternoon and just checked out Jasper. Next day was another day in Jasper, so in the morning we did a kayaking trip to Aberfasca River, biked back up to where we dropped our kayaks off, and then we kayaked slash pack rafted. Uh, my brother and I were in the pack raft, my parents were in the kayaks, and that was a super fun section on the Aberfasca River. Some nice rolling white water, nothing too dangerous. Um, no flips or anything like that, it was a really scenic float. After that, I went on a quick run, got about six miles in. It was Canada Day in Canada, so it was July 1st, and there was actually a Canada Day parade in Jasper, so we got to experience some of that which was kind of cool and then we made it up to pyramid lake and uh explored all around but our time in jasper was coming into an end as we had to make our way west leg of the journey was kind of like the um, british columbia um, sea to sky highway we drove from jasper about an hour west to the mount robson area found a place to camp a cool little cabin on a river it was super sick and that night we decided to go into the town of Velmont, which is a mountain town there in British Columbia. And we got some dinner and then I uh, saw on a map that there was like a big mountain bike park I have never heard of, but it was like kind of a local spot. There were thousands of mountain bikers in this town. So I was like, all right, it was getting late. We did, we drove up to the top of the mountain and um, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do like one quick lap. Velmont bike park, we're gonna do a little mountain biking. Should be super sick. So my parents dropped me off at the top of the mountain. I was riding down, riding down nicely. It was a super sick trail. Got some nice downhill riding in. Met up with my parents and was like, this is pretty fun, so I'm gonna go for one more ride. And this is where I went on Bacon, which is a blue trail. All right, here's Bacon. If you know me as a mountain biker, I'm used to mountain biking here in Maryland, where we get greed trails, we get some like rock technical stuff, but no like steep downhill terrain park type stuff so this next trail was kind of a bit out of my comfort zone started going down it nicely um there were some berms and stuff and then actually i was like picking up speed after after a while i was feeling more comfortable and i was picking up speed around some of the berms i kind of went into a blind corner and just went flying over a jump um kind of just lost it in midair came down over the handlebars super bad crash and I was by myself, landed, kind of froze for a second, and I'm so lucky, but this lady comes down behind me, um, and I like wave her down, and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, my legs hurt, or whatever. Um, so she helps me get down the mountain. Uh, I call my parents, and I'm like, yep, I crashed. Uh, um, I was in a lot of pain after the mountain bike accident. We went back to the lodge we were staying at, and my parents had to literally carry me in and put me on the bed. And we were kind of just like stuck in the middle of nowhere, not really sure what to do. The nearest hospital was like, there was one back in Jasper where we were at. So me and my dad drove back there. At this point, it was like 10 o'clock at night. We drove back there. This doctor there basically pulled us in and she was like, you guys aren't Canadian residents, so we can't really help you here in the Canadian healthcare system. So that was great. Um, so we basically went back and got some sleep. I don't really know if I slept that night. I was in so much pain. So the decision we made was to try to just like move quickly down to Whistler, British Columbia, where we thought there'd be a different healthcare system, a different healthcare place that could probably help us get an x-ray and see. The pain I was feeling was in my lower back and hips and that stuff, I was getting really bad muscle spasms. It was really difficult to walk. But we continued driving down the Sea to Sky Highway. We visited Wells Grace Provincial Park, otherwise known as the Waterfall Park of Canada. The waterfalls there were great. Hemlocken Falls actually was feeling like okay. So we were like, okay, we're gonna do a little hike to Mal Falls. And this was the biggest mistake of the trip. 
I could barely walk. I was like using hiking sticks like as crutches and it was a three mile hike, but it probably took me well over three hours to do the whole hike. I was in a lot of pain, but kind of just enjoying the adventure while in pain. I don't really know what happened. Uh, I wasn't really thinking straight, I guess. But we got a cool view of Mal Falls, and then we left Wells Grays and drove about six hours down the Cedar Sky Highway towards um, towards Whistler. It was raining this day. It was kind of mellow. We had a place to stay in Whistler. The plan was to mountain bike in Whistler, the best mountain bike park in the world. But I just crashed my mountain bike, and I could barely walk. I was in the best adventure town in the entire world, and I couldn't leave the hotel room, which made me so mad. Uh, basically, the next day, we took a rest day, and we went to the Whistler Med Center, got an x-ray. No broken bones, so that was good news. But we still needed an MRI to see if there was, like, muscular things or something. So we decided the next day, we headed back into the lower 48 we crossed in vancouver british columbia we crossed back into bellingham washington went to the bellingham hospital and the line there was just so long and they basically said yeah you're gonna need an orthopedic but we can't do that and the problem was two days from now we were supposed to get on the ferry to alaska so we were kind of sitting there in bellingham we couldn't get mri by then we weren't sure how my legs would feel. It was still really painful to walk. So we were sitting there trying to come up with what to do. Should we get in the ferry? And we actually got really close to just calling it a trip and flying home from Seattle, which was crazy to think about now. As, um, as you know, we made it to Alaska. And yeah, it's just crazy to think about now how we were just this close to calling the trip. And, but we decided to go for it. Um, they gave me crutches there. So uh, I was on crutches at this point. And the next day we just boarded the Alaska Marine Highway. We left our car, which we had driven across the country in Canada. We left it in the Bellingham, Washington ferry terminal. The real adventure begins now, let's do it. And then we actually walked onto the ferry, the Alaska Marine Highway Ferry, the Matanuska. We walked on with all of our stuff. It was kind of a pain to just get all of our bags on the ferry. But we walked on with our backpacks. And welcome aboard. My parents had a room. It was a two bed room. And I actually decided to sleep on the deck just for the adventure of it. I could have slept in the room in all honesty, but I wanted the adventure of sleeping on the deck of the Alaska Ferry just to say I did mostly, and I would say it was worth it. So the next leg of our journey was the Alaska Marine Highway. This is a system of ferries that connects the lower 48 and mainland Alaska. Our, our journey was a three-day cruise from Bellingham to Juneau. It was a really nice passage up the inside passage. The scenery was great. Um, I met some really nice friends on board local other teenagers who were traveling to Alaska and we even made friends with the captain and they let us go on the bridge and actually drive the boat for a second which was a really unique and really crazy experience. So this was a super cool experience up the inside passage. We stepped stopped at Ketchikan which is Alaska's first city also known as the salmon capital of the world. We saw some salmon there. It was a really cool port fishing town of Alaska only accessible by boat. Then we stopped in Wrangell, and in Wrangell something happened, so something malfunctioned with the boat, so they actually had to go outside in the open ocean that night, instead of going in through a narrow strip called the Wrangell Narrows, which a lot of people say is like the best part of the Alaska Ferry, but we had to go out in the open ocean, it got really rough that night, and um, then we made it to Juneau early the next morning. So we got off the Alaska Marine Highway. It was a really nice three day cruise. Would highly recommend it if you're traveling north. It was a super unique experience, super awesome experience. So we made it to Juneau. We had just our bags, no car, no nothing. We got off. We actually got an Uber ride to a hotel and then to Mendenhall Glacier. We hiked to Nugget Falls and then um, pack rafted a bit pretty close to Mendenhall Glacier. They don't want you to go too close, but this was a super cool experience. Pack rafting so close to such a huge glacier. I was in a mountain bike accident and on crutches hurt. But I took the three day ferry ride, rested a bit, and now it's mostly healed. So we are back in the adventuring. Easy. Then we went back to our hotel, 
got some sleep. The next morning, it was a typical Alaska rainforest day in Southeast Alaska. It was raining all day. It was like 50 degrees. It was just absolutely miserable outside, but we were in Juneau for one day, so we made the most of it. We did like a walking tour of Juneau, which is the capital of Alaska. Um, we did the Gold Belt Tram up to Mount Roberts. Almost made it to the Mount Roberts summit, but it was just raining and miserable and foggy. So we came back down and we explored the capital and the port of Juneau. It was a really fun day overall. The next day we had a flight from Juneau to Anchorage. We didn't want to go back on the Alaska Marine Highway. It was very expensive and open ocean crossing through Anchorage. So we decided to fly. Uh, we took all our bags on a flight from Juneau to Anchorage. And on this flight, actually, similar to the ferry, it was a malfunction on the flight. So we had to skip over port towns of Cordova and Yakutach. Uh, but it didn't matter for us because we were going to Anchorage. We got to Anchorage on time. And then in Anchorage, we had to rent an RV um, from Alaska Motorhomes. And it was about a 22-foot RV, perfect for four people. And we rented our RV and then headed south towards the Kenai Peninsula. We were now in mainland Alaska. We would spend the next two weeks exploring. The stop was Willowalla Campground, which was on the Kenai Peninsula. The drive down south of Anchorage, the Turnigan Arm was very awesome. One of the best drives ever. And we finally were in Alaska. It really felt, it was all the stuff you see online. This is Alaska. We were finally experiencing that. So the next day we got up and explored the Kenai Peninsula. We went into the port town of Whittier which is like a tunnel and it's very cool town of Whittier. Unfortunately, it was like a typical Alaska day and it was raining all day and foggy. So we really didn't want to get out of the car. We just kept driving around. We would do small hikes and we actually, um, after winning into Whittier, we were going to do the Portage Glacier hike, but we decided not to do that. And we heard from a local that uh, Byron Glacier was a good alternative. So we hiked, it was about a mile. And there was a super cool ice cave and glacier. I got some awesome footage. Uh, this was a super unique experience. This was like, I had never heard of this place, but it was ended up being one of our favorite hikes ever. It was an ice cave and glacier. It was just awesome. You could walk right on the glacier, which was a super unique experience. From Byron Glacier, we made our way south on the Kenai towards Seward. It was about a two hour drive. Nice scenery driving. Um, I think it was raining. We made it to Seward. Um, we were staying at the Resurrection Campground right on the Seward Bay, which Seward is a super cool port town near Kanaya Fords National Park. The next day we got up and uh, drove to Exit Glacier. This is like one of the most famous glaciers in Alaska. It's receding really fast. It's crazy how it's receding. And they mark off where you can and can't go. But we got a nice view of the glacier and we explored Kanaya Fords National Park. We, so we went on a hike the Lowell Point hike. Uh, it was about a two mile hike and we did some fishing. No luck there. We hadn't had any luck yet on the fish, but we continued our tr we continued to try to catch our salmon. And we drove south on the Kenai Peninsula towards Homer. Me and my mom went on a pack rafting trip on the Kenai River. Um, this was a super fun experience. Uh, we didn't really know what the river would be like. It was like started out really slow and the current really picked up. We were getting some like really rolling white water. And actually we were like about to take out where my dad was at picking us up. And he like waved us down, waved us down, was like, stop, stop, stop. Um, there was actually a waterfall around the next corner. So we took out on the, um, on one side of the bank. My dad was on the other and he was like, you can't go any farther because there was like a waterfall or something. So we had to paddle across the river that was like rolling. And that was... That was a crazy experience. We could have went down a waterfall on the pack raft. That was the first really, really close call on the pack raft of this trip. The Homer Spit is like a area on the Alaska Bay that's like a sandbar and there's a cool port town there. It's the halibut capital of the world. And the next morning we actually caught a I halibut. Got him. It was a really nice looking fish, like this big. It was sick. Uh, we caught a halibut and two flounders. And then we drove back up. Homer was awesome. We got to pack raft with sea lions and ate out. It was a very touristy town. Um, I would recommend driving south to Homer if you're on the Kenai. But we drove back. 
north towards Anchorage, spent the night around the Kenai River area, and actually cooked up the fish we caught earlier in the morning. And it was very good. I must say halibut tastes very good. So we got up the next and morning. The next it was really raining. It was a typical Kenai, Alaska day, 50 degrees and raining. And we really didn't want to do anything, but we heard that the salmon run was really good on the Russian River. So we hiked to Russian River Falls and actually got some sick shots of the salmon running, which was super cool. And then we moved back up to Anchorage, spent the night at Finger Lakes Rec area, which was a nice stop just north of Anchorage. And the next morning, we met up with our family, my cousins and uncle. We met up with them in Denali National Park. So the plan was we had reserved a campground inside Denali National Park at the Tech River Campground. RVs into Denali National Park, but because we had the reservation, we could. So we drove about 30 miles in the park. And just driving into Denali is one of the best drives ever. We got some sunshine. It was just sick. The wildflowers were out. The valleys were just so awesome. There's no words that can explain it. So we set up camp at the Teklanika River campground and we walked right in our backyard from our campground. It was a gorgeous view of the uh, Teklanika River and the mountains there in Denali. And the next, we had three days in Denali National Park. So the first day we rode the park bus, which is the only way to travel in Denali National Park. We had a bus ticket, so we got in the bus at our campground. They just picked us up, and we took to the end of the road, which was actually at like mile 45 because there was a landslide. Yeah, I'd say the so road's the closed. So the buses couldn't go any farther wow. on the, I think it's like a 100-mile <laughs> road, which is Denali Park Road, but it was closed because of a landslide. So we got out and hiked to a landslide, and then me and my uncle went on an adventure up to a mountain. Um, there are no trails in Denali National Park. It's just all wild land and you can hike wherever you want So we just saw a mountain and we were like, let's go climb it I just love the fact that Denali is like that um, It was a really easy hike up to a summit. It got foggy at the top um, so Nothing about really exciting happened besides for the fact much that we were just bushwhacking in grizzly bear territory We're just bushwhacking Denali. Got some bear scat in Denali National Park. Um, we had a close call. We tried to drop down the back side of the mountain, but there was like a cliff. We had to walk around. We ended up doing some bushwhacking, but we made it back to the road. And then we went back to the campground. And that afternoon we went on a pack rafting trip. So if you don't know anything about pack rafting, uh, we've done it so much this trip, but basically it's a raft that you inflate and you can carry it in a backpack. So it's really good for Denali. We actually rode the bus up to a bridge and then inflated our pack rafts and floated down to our campground. And this was like a two mile section on the Teklanika River. It was just great. The next day was a full pack rafting day. We actually did that same stretch that we did um, the night before. We did that again in the morning. And then later that afternoon, me and my uncle went on the same stretch, but we were going to go a bit farther. So this brings me to my next close call. So we got on the bus and basically how it works is we can tell the bus driver where they where we want to get dropped off at. So we told the bus driver we're going to get dropped off at this bridge. And the bus driver says, I don't know if I can do that. I heard there was a bear close to that bridge. So I'm about to get out and there's a bear right yeah. up there. We're going down. And she's not allowed to drop us off where a bear is. And we said that we were hiking there earlier in the morning as a whole family just on the riverbed. And we were like, oh, we didn't see a bear. We didn't see a bear. It was fine. And um, so we actually pulled down to the bridge and the bus driver's looking around, seeing if she sees any bears. And she's like, all right, I don't see anything. You guys can get off. So we get off the bus for our pack raft. Bus just dropped us off and uh, there was a bear over there. We were just hiking over there this morning. So we got out with our bear spray, went down, about to put it in the water on the Teklanika River. And she's sitting there on the bridge on the bus and my dad's on the bus and he's like the bears coming closer the bears coming closer so we inflate the pack rafts and we like can't inflate it any faster than we can and the bear is like walking towards us but there's like a brush so we can't see the bear but at this point there's three buses lined up on the bridge just watching us inflate our boats as the bears getting closer and um we inflated really fast and actually just like threw everything in our boats and jumped in our boats and just went under the bridge. 
uh, as the bear was like getting towards us. It wasn't charging us, but it was like slowly walking towards us. Oh, that was a scary experience. Um, we kind of just regrouped after that. And that was only the beginning of how adventurous this pack rafting trip was. So we were going down the Teklanika River. We went two miles back past our camp. It was rolling on Glacier Fred pack rafting. It was super sick. And it actually started raining uh, as we went past our campground. The river got narrower. The white water got bigger. It was raining. It was roaring. And we, our plan was to go about three miles past it, past our camp, and then the river paralleled the road. So we would take out and then hike up to the road. Um, but basically, we were about halfway through this, and I came down. There was like a narrow section of the river, and I was in front of my uncle, and I saw a there was a tree across the entire river. And it was maybe three or four feet above the water line, really deep. And I couldn't, this bank was so steep right there, I couldn't get out of my boat. So my choices were I could like jump and try to get out of my boat, in which case I probably lost my raft and maybe went swimming in the water, which would have been bad. So I kind of just was like, all right, I got to go under this thing. So I like laid down on my pack raft, crossed my arms, and I was flat. And I just went right under the sweeper and it was so nerve wracking, but I kind of came through. My uncle was behind me, so he took his boat out because he saw that obviously don't go this way because it was dangerous. <sighs> the adventure was still not done. We had to get back to the bus and the bus ride, um, basically the bus is run on a schedule. So we knew the last bus to take us back to our campground was going in about 10 minutes. And we still had to bushwhack about a quarter mile. So we deflated our pack rafts, put it in our backpack, and bushwhack. Will we make it back to the road and survive the Denali backcountry? Back, That's a question. Like, through some really thick brush in really dense grizzly territory. We didn't see a bear there, but we made it up to the road just in time. And then the bus comes down, picks us up, and takes us back to camp. But that was just a legendary experience all around. It was coming to a close. But the next morning, the one thing we were missing was a spot Denali. And we were driving out of the park and it was just super sunny that day. And we actually saw Mount Denali, which is the highest point in North America. It was super white, prominent peak. It was just way bigger than anything else around it, which was sick. And we did the Savage Alpine Trail, which was one of my favorites of all time. And uh, then we exited Denali National Park and continued driving north to Fairbanks. In Fairbanks, we stayed at Chana River Hot Springs, which was like, there's like a hot spring, a hot tub there. It was a really nice stop. Don't know if I'd recommend going north to Fairbanks, honestly. That's kind of plain driving. And then we went down south towards like the Toke Cutoff and uh, towards Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Um, we stopped at Kastner Ice Caves on that drive and it was really cool. Kastner Ice Caves was an awesome stop. Um, we did some off-grid camping at some lakes there around the Tangled Lakes area. It was super cool. Off-grid, like pull off at a rest area and just camp. You're by yourself. You're just so remote. And then we visited Wrangell St. Elias National Park. We went to the visitor center, checked it off. However, it's the, it's the biggest national park in our national park system. However, it is so remote and so inaccessible. We could only do the one mile around the trailhead. So we could see the mountains, but we were so st still so far away from them. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend going to Wrangell St. Elias. Not sure it was worth it. Um, then we started heading back towards Anchorage on the, on the Glen Highway. This was a super sick drive. Uh, we stopped and hiked Gunsight Mountain. Didn't make it to the summit, but it was a sick hike. Uh, we saw Mount Nuska Glacier and then basically headed into towards Anchorage. We camped in Wasilla and the next morning was our last morning in Alaska. So we decided to go to the Hatcher Pass area, which was underrated. Uh, it was super sick scenery and extremely underrated in my mind. We went up to Independence Mine, which is a cool old mine town. We hiked to a cool lake and there was like icebergs in it. We went swimming in the icebergs. And then I actually decided I'm gonna climb this mountain on my last day in Alaska. So I bushwhacked up to a peak by myself and it was super terrifying, but um, the view up there was probably the best 
that was the best singular view of my life. It was sick. We could see like 100 miles in the Denali range. Then we headed back and we actually had to drop my brother and my mom off at the airport as they were flying back home from Alaska. But me and my dad camped one more night in the Walmart parking lot. We dropped off our, we dropped off our RV and then flew from Anchorage back to Seattle, Washington. Actually got an Uber from Seattle to Bellingham, Washington, which is about an hour. Picked up our car, which we left about three weeks earlier, and then found a place to camp in Bellingham at Deception Pass State Park, which is a nice stop. Uh, we spent the next morning exploring there. Super sick Washington coastline. And then we headed into the North Cascades National Park. Um, we camped. Now my dad and I had about a week to drive back cross country all the way from Seattle to Maryland. And we had some stops we wanted to make along the way but it was really just crushing out mileage driving wise. Um, our first stop was in North Cascades National Park. And then we actually got up at 3.30 a.m. and drove up this really, really windy mountain road to Sauk Mountain, went about two mile hike um, to sunrise. And it was the best sunrise ever over the North Cascades range. It was just great. And um, then we hiked down to Sauk Lake. We didn't catch any fish there. Um, but then that night we had a reservation in the North Cascades backcountry. We did a paddling camping trip on Diablo Lake. So we took our kayaks. We kayaked from Colonial Creek Campground out Diablo Lake and to Buster Brown Campground and did some hammock camping, some cliff jumping. Diablo Lake is just one of the best lakes. It's so blue and the cliff jumping there was great. And the hammock camping, it was a perfect night. We had a fire, we did some hammock camping, it was great. And then we paddled out the next morning out of Diablo Canyon and Diablo Lake. And then it was time to just crush some mileage. We got in our cars and started driving east. We made it all the way through Eastern Washington, found a place to camp in like Montana slash Idaho at a national forest site. Got up the next morning and continued driving. <laughs> so that morning we drove about five hours into Yellow West Yellowstone. Um, we wanted to spend some time in Yellowstone, obviously one of the best national parks in the U.S. But we just drove from the west entrance down to the south entrance in the Jackson. We stopped at Old Faithful, saw all the sights of Yellowstone. Obviously, didn't give it full justice because it's such an amazing place and we were only there for like 10 hours or something. But then we found a place to camp in the... Uh, in between Yellowstone and Grand Teton. Next day we explored Grand Teton. We did some pack rafting on the Snake River, which was a great trip. And then we um, explored Jenny Lake. Uh, we didn't find a good place to cliff jump if you, and we just had to keep driving. So we drove from Jackson, Wyoming to Pinedale. It was about a two hour drive. We could not find a place to camp in Pinedale uh, all the national forest sites were full, so we ended up camping in like some field in Pinedale. It was like 11 o'clock at night before we found a place to camp. One final adventure the next morning, we actually hiked into the Wind River Range in Wyoming, which has some of the best backpacking and some of the best scenery in the U.S. But we did about a 15-mile day hike, did some fishing, didn't catch any fish, which was kind of disappointing. But we saw the Wind River Range, and we will be back there someday. But at this point, it was time to just crush some mileage. We were about 2,000 miles from home, and we decided, let's just go for it. Wyoming to Maryland, um, it took us about three days, and we were just ready to be home at this point. My dad and I both agreed. It might be our last time driving out west, and it's just so far. Um, we actually did 1,000 miles in a day, which was crazy. Uh, we stayed in a rest area somewhere in between and it took us about three days home, but we made it home. Details, we went about 10,000 miles in 45 days. This will conclude the video, but I'm gonna read straight from my diary what I wrote on my final thoughts as we were driving back from the trip. This trip has been an experience I will never forget. We went on a lot of fun adventures and had some long rainy nights. There were a couple times I remember thinking, I want to go home, but I would see something awesome, usually the small things, that made me realize I am so lucky to be here. I lost my drone and said this trip is ruined. Got a new one before Alaska. After my mountain bike crash, I said I won't be able to walk in a week. Three weeks, late, three weeks later, I was hitting 20 miles a day. I got extremely lucky. 
a couple of times, especially in Denali National Park pack rafting. Life on the road was draining and hard at times, but the good times make it worth it. All of the adventures were fun, like mountain biking, pack rafting, kayaking, hiking. We caught some fish, saw a lot of wildlife, including eight moose, three grizzlies, three black bears, elk, caribou, and eagles and other birds. One of my favorite things was the polar bear plunge into cold water, which I did a lot over our trip. Alaska has, and all the places we have been are so big and there's so much more to explore. I hope I will continue to explore until the next adventure.